Hi everyone, Alex with Beam It Up here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a plumbing stack in Revit. We're going to start by placing our lavatory, then a tailpiece, then a P-trap, then a trap arm, then a fixture fitting, then a vent stack, a waste stack, and finally a clean out. And besides that, I'm going to give you a couple of uh, professional tips that are going to help you out. See you in Revit. And before we even start, think about it, it makes sense. If you like this kind of content, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. You hit that bell so you get notifications. You don't miss any of our videos. Alright everyone, so the first thing we're going to do as always is open up our uh, Revit model and let's try to find some plumbing fixtures in our background. If you don't know how to create a plumbing project, uh, you can also learn how to do that in one of our videos. You can go to the description and over there you'll find the link. Notice that I have my architectural model linked in. One thing that I always like to do is go to my visibility graphics overrides. You can do that by uh, the shortcut VV or VG. And then I'll go under Revit links. And then I'll go under my architectural link. And instead of by host view, I want to customize this. Then I go under model categories and I change this to custom. And then over there, I'm going to go PL that navigates me very close to plumbing fixtures and I'm going to overwrite the lines so that I can see them a little bit clearer so I'm gonna make them like this sharp green here and I go okay 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 and now I can find them a little bit easier right and the next step would be to drop a, a lavatory here so I'll go here under my plumbing fixtures and I'll drop this lavatory. This is a out of the box, out of desk, wall mounted lavatory. Did a, little, a couple modifications, but you can find those uh, in the standard library. So I'm gonna drop, it, say this uh, 20 by 18 lavatory. And uh, there are some regulations as far as the height at which you have to drop that lavatory. Uh, we'll talk about those in a little bit, but for now, I'm just gonna drop the, I'm gonna drop it at three feet, right? Just uh, to get a starting point. And I'm not gonna place it exactly here. I'm gonna place it around here. And that's intentional because now I can do AL to align and I can have it perfectly centered with the architectural background. And now as far as height, I'm going to create a quick section here. Let's see, I don't need it to be that deep. So I'm just going to shorten it up a little bit. And I'm going to double click on the arrowhead. And we are on level one. Okay. One thing I like to do in my sections is I would go fine. So I have as much detail as I can. And here I would like to have this as wireframe so I can grab things a little bit behind uh, the front plane. Uh, notice that we can do a line as well and then click on the architects and click on us. And then this here would be our fixture. See how it has my initials here. And one thing you can do is since that. Uh, once you have a section that looks exactly how you want it to look like, you can always come here to view and under view templates, you can do create template from current view and you give it a name. You can call it a uh, AJS section, for example, I'm going to call it right. And then you have a final chance to change things. Like in this case, for example, I wouldn't care too much about the view scale because I'm not printing this and you know this is not the scope of this video if you want me to uh, make a video about uh, plumbing templates or or any other type of templates let me know in the comments and I'll just create one but for now let's keep going with our plumbing you can find a, a ton of this um, lavatories uh, from any manufacturer you know it could be 
whether it's Zern, Kohler, American Standard, uh, or even the, the Autodesk, uh, out of the box uh, fixture that I'm just showing you here. Um, as far as the height, the maximum height, I'm, I'm licensed in, in Florida, right? So I deal with the Florida building code. And uh, on chapter six, plumbing elements and facilities, the, the maximum height, uh, it's 34 inches to the rim, right? You also have some minimum distance here, uh, I believe it's 29 inches, but that's typically specified by the architect. We just pipe to it. So out of my plumbing fixture, I'm gonna go down. You don't wanna go down too much, just a little bit. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And then I'm just gonna go into the wall and then go down. Keep in mind, the first thing is that this is our tailpiece. It cannot be too long. We'll talk about that in a little bit again. Uh, I'm gonna change this elbow to a P-trap. If you don't know how to do that, we have another video that explains how to do it. The link's in the description. And if you don't know how to create a pipe type, you can also learn that in another video. Link's in the description as well. Now I'm gonna delete this elbow for a little bit and I'm just going to extend this pipe, which is gonna become our stack, right? I know that the size that I'm looking for here is two inches, right? And I'm gonna do trim extend TE for short to create this connection. So two things. The first thing is that this pipe here should be sloped at a quarter inch per foot because it's a one and a quarter inch pipe in this case. Okay, we'll talk about trap adapters and all that in a little bit, but for now, let's keep it simple. Um, the other thing that you wanna keep in mind is that this piece here should actually be, like the bottom part of the stack is gonna be our waste stack and the top part of the stack is, is the vent inside. We'll talk about the, that in a little bit. And a cool tip that I'm gonna give you is that you can just delete this and copy this piece to the top and then change it to the right system and the right pipe type. So you can click on it and then just go to vent PVC now that you have it in the right pipe type. And now let's go to our system and it will be sanitary vent. And you already have your stack. You can connect it and you won't lose any any of the properties of the other system. So this should be pretty good. And uh, now the last thing we're gonna do is, actually you can you can even copy this fitting. That's, uh, we're using a sanitary T. Uh, this sometimes is, is just a, a fixture fitting. It's a different type of fitting, but it's pretty similar to this and we don't wanna waste time. You know, we're always pressed on time, so we have to be practical. Um, so in this case, I'm connecting to create a clean out because I'm on the first floor I wanna extend this pipe a little bit and I'm just going to cap it. Cap open ends. And uh, then you would go underground, under under your slab, and then you will start. This pipe's very important that you get it sloped. So you should be sloping down. If you're doing two inches, you will be sloping at a quarter inch uh, per foot. Uh, and if you're doing a larger pipe, like three inches, you would go with one eighth of an inch per foot, okay? So in this case, I'm just gonna do a quarter inch and um, that would be it. Now, uh, another cool tip is that even though you think that if you have a thousand of those, it would be a good idea that you don't, don't even do this part, right? And then what you do is you come here to your floor plan and then you can actually, you know what, let's, let's take a look at it in 3D and see what we have. This is what we have so far, right? So you could easily just select all this and then you could create a group. I'm gonna ignore this warning here. And I'm gonna call it a lab stack, right? And now I could copy these a bunch of times. You know, I could copy it here if I wanted to eh, or all over the place. Uh, and sometimes, you know, since this is a wall hosted element, the, the lavatory, I mean, uh, it, it gets a little erratic every once in a while, depending on the hosting surface. So what you can do is, let me ungroup this. What you could do is select all these and then just group that. It all depends on your workflow and what you wanna do, okay? So in reality, those four lavatories 
would most likely be discharged into a common horizontal sanitary drain line here because it's a multiple restroom but for the purposes of this video we did a single stack just to do it a little bit simpler all right let's say the aliens calm down and they want to mess around with your youtube history what are you gonna do can find my video no what you want to do is subscribe to the channel you hit that bell that way you get notifications you know where your video is and you stick it to the aliens so if we do a quick search under Google Images or Plumbing Stack, you'll see a lot of very nice pictures. I'm gonna to try to put a couple of them together for you so we can talk about what we're gonna do. Okay, so these are the same Google Images. Um, that's your typical P-trap. I'm sure you have one at home. And the main reason we want a P-trap is we wanna create a liquid barrier between the stinkiness of the sanitary system and your conditioned space whether it's your bathroom or your kitchen. So if you didn't have this yellow part here, which is the air admission, then what would happen is that you would suck this liquid seal. It would bring it with you by siphonage, and then the stinkiness would go into your space. So in order to avoid that, you need to admit air into the system so that you can protect the seal, okay? And this is a typical image of under your sink, so that's the bottom of the picture. That's your tailpiece right here. Then you have a trap adapter Then you have your P-trap and then you have your fixture arm or your trap arm, which is a piece that connects from the P-trap to your stack. And then your stack's gonna have two components. One of them's gonna be uh, the vent part and the other one's gonna be the drainage part. And if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you like it down there. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notified. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.